The Cisco Web Security Appliance can be configured to authenticate users before allowing them to access the Internet. The packet flow of a single authentication event in the Web Security Appliance is slightly different depending on whether the proxy is deployed in an explicit forward mode or in a transparent mode. In this video, we'll look at the packet flow for an authentication event in the WSA in both explicit and transparent modes. First, let's look at an explicit deployment scenario. On the left side of the screen is Bob, who is logged into a Windows machine which has been joined to his company's domain. He is logged into the machine using his domain credentials, and now he's ready to go to Cisco.com and check out some sweet user guides that were just published. In this design, Bob's Windows machine knows that there is a proxy on the network, and its location has been configured in the machine either by a group policy or by a pack file, or maybe some poor sysadmin who had to manually configure all 300 machines on his domain. Uh, in any case, when Bob types cisco.com in his browser, the computer knows that instead of reaching out to Cisco, it has to reach out to the proxy first. A TCP socket is created on port 80 between the workstation and the web security appliance. Once the TCP handshake is completed, Bob's computer sends an HTTP GET request to the proxy. While the destination IP address of the GET request is that of the web security appliance, the requested resource will show the full URL of HTTP Cisco.com and the host header will also show Cisco.com. The WSA is happy to forward this request upstream to Cisco, but first it wants to know that Bob's computer is actually allowed to go there. So it responds with a 407 proxy authentication request. This lets Bob's browser know that it needs to authenticate before it can get to the internet. It also includes a number of headers called proxy authenticate headers. They will indicate to Bob's computer which authentication methods it supports. These correspond directly to what is configured in the matched identification profile in the WSA. In this example, it will show that Bob is allowed to authenticate using Kerberos, which is mentioned as Negotiate, or NTLM, or BASIC. Bob's machine will now send another GET request, but this time it will include authentication information. The authentication exchange will proceed according to whichever authentication protocol is chosen. For example, for NTLM, we'll see a challenge and response process. Once the authentication process is completed, the WSA sends the GET request upstream to the real Cisco server. In the real world, since Bob only typed Cisco.com into his browser and not HTTPS Cisco.com, the server will return a 301 redirect that upgrades the connection to HTTPS and requires the TLS handshake before any data is exchanged. The WSA access logs will show each of these transactions. The %m custom field will show the authentication mechanism that was used to authenticate Bob. Now let's look at a transparently deployed proxy. In this scenario, Bob's computer does not know that there's a proxy on the network and always attempts to reach the internet directly. But the network does have a proxy and all outbound web requests are being transparently redirected to it via either WCCP or policy-based routing. When Bob types Cisco.com into his browser this time, his computer makes a TCP connection to what it thinks is Cisco.com. What is actually happening is that the TCP SYN packet has been redirected to the web security appliance. The web security appliance spoofs Cisco's IP address and completes the handshake with Bob's computer. When Bob sends the HTTP GET request for Cisco.com, the web security appliance responds with a 307 temporary redirect which contains a unique location header. This header redirects Bob to the configured redirect host name of the web security appliance, which is built with a path from the UID, Bob's IP address, and the originally requested site. When Bob's computer follows this redirect, the same process plays out as did in the explicit scenario. The web security appliance responds with a 401 that offers the available authentication mechanisms as the authenticate headers, and Bob's machine chooses which one it wants to use. Once the authentication is complete, the WSA redirects Bob back to the original resource, in this case Cisco.com. The access logs on the web security appliance will show the original request, the redirect, the auth challenge, and the final redirect back to the original site. 
Once authenticated, the %m custom field in the access log will also show the authentication mechanism that was used.